You talked a little bit about uh, gut health and the microbiome, and, and so much is being made now of the, of the bacteria that we have uh, in our stomach. And I read studies every week. Last week I read one that, uh, that showed a possible connection between gut health and hardening of the arteries, one that was uh, gut, gut health and potential hearing loss as we age. I mean, things that you wouldn't even connect can all seem to be go back, can all go back to, you know, how it starts in our gut. Yeah, and I, there's a cool, a couple of cool studies um, around looking basically at ancient poop and ancient dental caries, you know, taking, you know, example, um, you know, in archaeological digs, finding our ancestors and looking at their poop and looking at their teeth. And we were able to find that one of the things that have trended out in the last couple thousand years and definitely picking up momentum in the last few hundred years is the change in the microbiome. That was the biggest, and the biggest difference of why we're seeing the health issues we're seeing today is related to diversity of our microbiome. So when you are, you know, if you're kind of like a standard American diet, you eat about five main foods, potatoes, corn, wheat, okay? Your vegetables might be iceberg lettuce and tomatoes. Um, that's kind of it. And up until the Cold War, we had thousands of varied crops in this country until we started subsidizing our farmers to go to monocropping. So soybean, corn, canola, rice, or not rice, excuse me, wheat, um, barley, you know, like it, it simplified our diets terribly, which also means we monocropped our food, but we monocropped ourself. Mm -hmm. And the diversity is what gives us robust health. And as we, um, the, as you said, it's like uh, we've been finding that our certain mineral constituents are based on our microbiome. So there's calcium excess, which then lands in the arteries, lands in the breast tissues, lands in the brain tissue, lands in the kidneys. Problem, you know, um, or uh, bifidus is a huge one. Bifidus is that is what gives babies that beautiful mustard yellow sweet smelling poos mm -hmm. in the beginning and if they aren't having that and they're breastfeeding and you see stinky green ones you know that bifidus is out of the building and bifidus is our immune system especially in the first two years of life and when I when you start to see that you recognize well they're not starting off on the, on the right foot here and that's when our immune system really takes root so that's a big pattern we've even learned that People with bifidus deficiencies will not respond to immunomodulating therapies like PD-1 checkpoint inhibitors. So you need bifidus to utilize a lot of the immune therapies that we're using in Western medicine right now. So it's incredible, like you said, how much we're realizing, oh gosh, this plays a much bigger role. Mm -hmm. um, and again, as the naturopaths, we've kind of been made fun of for our focus in poo and digestive health all these years. We've been saying this for you know, forever, um, that the gut is really the source. Hippocrates, for crying out loud, you know, says, you know, the, the gut is the source of health or, or disease. So I love the research that's coming out. We're, we're finding depression is based in our microbiome. We're finding autoimmune disease is based in our microbiome. It's huge. And where does your microbiome get its, its raw material from your food? So if you're eating food, especially those monocrops we talked about, you are also taking in a ton of chemicals, specifically glyphosate, Roundup. Okay, those monocrops are Roundup ready, and they destroy, completely destroy our microbiome and destroy the lumen of our gut. And then if you then pile on top of that, the factory farmed animals that are living on glyphosate drenched grains, where in history did a cow ever eat you know, corn? It just didn't happen, <laughs> you know, they ate grass. And so their microbiomes are destroyed and their health is compromised. And then we put them through stressful, compact environments and feed them and fatten them with high omega-6 rich foods. And then we slaughter them in high stress environments and then we ingest them. It is absolutely gonna have an impact on our chemistry. And I'm a person who's not against ant eating animal protein, but you cannot eat um, four-legged Superfund sites. That's not okay. You have to source your food. You have to know where your food comes from today because your microbiome and therefore your health and your life depend on it. Mm -hmm.